Hey everybody, it's Sean and Trey with Reactions to the Classics. Before we get started today, we just wanted to invite you to take a look at our Patreon page where we have all kinds of reward tiers, anywhere from reacting to an entire album, to songs, and to support us for as little as a dollar a month. It really helps us out. And you can also check out our Facebook and Discord groups down below. Got a great community of people who love music. And uh, all that to say, y'all, let's get to today's video. What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined again by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics. We're going to be taking a look at the band's record Northern Lights, Southern Cross. This comes courtesy of our patron Jimmy. Shout out to Jimmy as Shout always, Jimmy. man. Thank you, brother. Uh, if you want to check out the other reviews we've done from the band thus far, we will have those linked down below. But uh, before we get going into the tracks, let's get to the quick facts. Yeah, it's our sixth studio album. Uh, released in November of 1975. Their first album of new material since 1971, Cahoots. All the songs uh, were written and composed by Robbie Robertson. And it was recorded using a 24 track tape recorder, which allowed Garth Hudson to include multiple layers of keyboards on several tracks. And we won't even have to point those out if you've mm -hmm. listened to this, because you'll know <laughs> which ones they are. But Trey, that's really all I have here. So we can just open up side one with Forbidden Fruit which to me sounded very swampy, like almost like a CCR song. A little bit uh, to me, uh, it's interesting because it definitely had a heavy organ and yeah. even synthesizer. So yeah. to me, uh, it was more like a, a country-ish, uh, yeah, kind of a little swampy in there as yeah. well. Um, almost like a country fever dream just because uh, it was a, a little bit wonky at points with everything that was in there. But uh, Yeah, it's kind of like everything in the kitchen sink in this first yeah. track. They're, they're not going to be accused of uh, stripping yeah. this one back. I got a question for you. What did you think the Forbidden Fruit was? Because it's not real clear from the lyrics. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It, there are some biblical allusions in there, there uh, with the Bib uh, with the Forbidden Fruit, of course, but also talking about the golden calf uh, at a certain point in here. So uh, for me, the message I got was the, I didn't really think, I guess, what the Forbidden Fruit itself was, but that once uh, you're in that situation where you go a, a little bit, you, you taste the fruit, it's a lot easier for you to keep down on a uh, negative path yeah and some people say that it's about heroin that's where a lot of speculation mm. is I reread the lyrics a couple of times trying to keep that in mind I couldn't really see it but I, I absolutely mm. have no idea maybe we could get Robbie <laughs> on here and ask him what's up with that that's gonna take us to hobo jungle also on the lyrics I sort of could figure it out but I think uh, basically this hobo is living a life in the boxcars and the railroad and he dies, and I think his lover is attending his funeral, maybe. But I may be way off with that. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're kind of right on the money there. This was more a piano-led track. Of Manuel's deep, convincing vocals kind of grip you uh, in a way that you you think he could be singing it as everybody's by a campfire. Um, yeah. I, I thought this was a solid tune. Not as good as our, our the great opener that we had, but uh, it, I agree. Still, yeah. still really solid. And then we go to one of their more famous tunes on this record and uh, kind of in their discography, they ended up playing it at their last concert, which, you know, of course is incredibly famous. We got Ophelia. It was the lead single, tells the singer's attempt to find Ophelia. The relationship between the singer and her is never really explained, but he finds out she's left town, apparently in a hurry. It sounds a lot like the W.S. Walcott Medicine Show uh, on their Stage Fright album, which we have reviewed. Uh, starts off with good brass, so I thought of you because we know oh, yeah. you like that that good brass. Excellent guitars throughout. What did you think of this? Yeah, one? you can't go wrong with the brass and then the slight twanginess to Helm's voice in here. As I, I always like with the band because you, you got Richard Manuel, you got Helm in here, um, you, you got a bunch of different members that constantly are. Uh, contributing yeah. to to uh, you know the, the lead vocals and whatnot and so uh, I thought that was on display here just a, a song that oozed some warmth to it and uh, again I thought was really great yeah and that takes us to a track where Helm mm -hmm. Manuel and Danko trade off the lead vocals uh, the last song on the A side Acadian Driftwood actually my favorite track 
on oh, the entire album. Yeah, my, I think that it would be right there, if not number two. Uh, it's a longer tune. Yes, it uh, is. It tells a fantastic story, and it really just portrays the troubled history of Nova Scotia and Acadia. And the Acadians are descendants of a French colonists who settled in Canada and New England before 1710, when the, the British conquered France's entire Acadian colony. Ever since then, the Acadians have been an ethnic minority, and this track kind of deals with that. Some of the highlights are they signed a treaty and our homes were taken, loved ones forsaken, they didn't give a damn, try to raise a family, end up an enemy. Guy works in the U.S., eventually heads back up north. Uh, the fiddle here, I thought, was uh, uh, quite quite the highlight. Yeah, I agree 100%. I put that down, too. I mean, obviously, in any band album, you're going to get this rich, diverse instrumentation. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are true musicians. So this is something that I enjoy really from start to finish, and I spun this song more than any other oh, on this album. Yeah, then the, the band, I think, has a unique ability to to take the best parts of country, take the best parts yeah. of roots rock, and inject it into a, a great blend that is their own unique sound, uh, but doesn't feel kind of forced in one genre. Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent point. Now we're gonna go to the B-side. We're gonna start off with Ring Your Bell. On this mm -hmm. one for me, it's a little funky, and the brass was yep. absolutely the star here. For me, the Ring Your Bell, mm -hmm. I think, it's a sexual illusion, but I'm not yeah. <laughs> really sure. So, what do you think? Well, I, I also enjoyed the uh, the brass and organ interplay a, a bit more, you know, upbeat compared. Guitar was awesome as well compared to the last tune. Uh, I thought it was a bit more uh, filler, but it has that um, kind of outlaw sensibility to it. So you can't help but smile a bit as uh, you're going along, and it, I, I think it is a little. Uh, kind of down and dirty as you were alluding to. Yeah, and I think, you know, we're still in 1975 here, so albums, it's all about vinyl, it's all about what you start and end sides mm -hmm. with. So you mentioned it in there, it, it was really a, an odd choice for me mm -hmm. to start off side two with, is I would have started it off with this next track, mm -hmm. It Makes No Difference. And the theme is the singer's inability to get over a failed relationship. Among the metaphors he used to portray his sadness are images of weather, such as the sun never shining, Constant rain and clouds hanging well. We got Danko singing lead, Hellman Manuel on harmony, adding to the sense of the pain. It's great, it's country tinged, mm -hmm. but just a tremendous, tremendous track. Yeah, we have some light keyboards here. Again, a, a little bit of a, a light organ as well. And uh, they're, the vocal interplays here, the way they uh, kind of bounced off each other, I thought was expertly done. And just um, the, the sax solo that in we the had. It was awesome. You got a great guitar outro. Yeah, and the ending verse, well, I love you so much that it's all that I can do just to keep myself from telling you that I never felt so alone before. Just a great way to display that sadness. One of my favorites from the group and this ended up being my favorite on the record. Yeah, it probably is up there with me too. I don't know. Maybe I do like this one. I think I like Acadian Driftwood better. But this song's six and a half minutes long. Mm -hmm. That's going to move us to the next track, which is five minutes long. Jupiter Hollow. Basically describes the dream world of this guy. He may be going crazy. It does drop northern lights in the lyrics, so I, I like that. Instrumentation was a little space age at time. Nice harmonies. For me, this one was just okay. Yeah, this was not a favorite for me. It was still fun, though. I mean, you have, have mentioned in, you know, like a Dragon Queen, Apollo, just yeah. definitely has a surreal fantasy like, uh, um, you know, mood to it, and that clavinet really just gets going as the song progresses. You just ride that wave of the sound, and then that takes us all already to the final I know, track. Eight song, Rags and Bones, which for me, it just described a place, whatever place it is, mm -hmm. and all of the different things that are going on around. Yeah, this was only Manuel's second solo tune here, and uh, he made the most of it. Some of the best guitar playing, so the smoothest guitar playing comes on here. Uh, has a bit of a uh, funk country soul sensibility to it. A bit more up tempo, which helped differentiate it, and um, kind of the the ragamuffin crew that's mentioned in the song uh, makes it stand out. I thought it was a solid closer. I thought it was a solid closer too. I think it, this one more than any of the others does have a little early to mid '70s feel to mm -hmm. it because, as you mentioned before, the band just kind of mixes everything together. It's a smorgasbord, so they don't really sound dated. Like you can't no. pick it out and go. Oh, this is probably from 1968. Yeah. This is the only song I've heard of theirs in, in the last couple albums that actually sounds of the time period, which is not a knock on it at all. You should mm -hmm. sound of the time period sometimes. It makes you commercially uh, appealing. But 
That brings us to our favorite tracks. I already mentioned mine. It makes mm -hmm. no difference in Acadian Driftwood. Well, those are the two I wrote down for I mean, my, only eight songs, yeah, so, for know. myself. So if I had to choose my, my favorite of the favorite, that would be it. Uh, and then that's going to move us on to our overall score. Uh, for me, I uh, was a big, big fan of Stage Fright, uh, probably bigger than most. I didn't think this album quite reached that, but it was still pretty darn good for me man i uh I, i'm really enjoying the the band sound here and uh i'm, I'm curious to continue to go through hear their work with uh, dylan that they did yeah. in 75 as well the the basement tapes i'm looking forward to going to that but uh here i mean with only eight songs it's short compact to the point you never get bored with it uh i'm gonna be at an eight out of ten all right i'm gonna be a 7.25 i think there's eight songs that you mentioned two of them are fantastic Two of them are a little fillerish and four of them are pretty good. Mm -hmm. That kind of brings me to a 7.25. Very nice offering. We always talk about this. I appreciate eight or nine song albums because they mm -hmm. just come along and you get to really get engrossed in the music. Usually they have longer intros and outros, and usually they're from bands that can play instruments, yeah. <laughs> such as Led Zeppelin, many seven and eight uh, tracks yes. from them as well. You're not going to do that if you can't really uh, bring on the musicianship and exactly. instrumentation there. So, Jimmy, we really appreciate you yes, bringing sir. this to us. Yeah, and let us know what you think of this record down in the comments below, y'all. Uh, if you enjoy this video, give us that big a thumbs up, helps us out, as well as hitting that subscribe button if you aren't already. And until next time, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Happy listening, and we will see ya.